Um, so I'm here today, my name's Anne, Anne O'Shea, and um, uh, some of our um, partners are here too. So Frank Tochney from Athlone, Fiona Lawless from Dundalk, Christine Kelly from Maynooth, uh, Katrina Nihay from Maynooth and DCU, and Kiron McAvord from Maynooth. Um, our project is um, a partnership between the four institutions, Athlone, Maynooth, Dundalk and DCU. And we had, or we do have 11 people involved, um, people from mathematics departments, engineering departments, and also a computer programmer, Christine, and a research student. Um, so just to remind you, for the people who weren't here before maybe, our project is about trying to combine formative assessment and technology and finding ways to do that in a sensible way in a first year maths course. Um, we used Black and Williams' definition of formative assessment and what we took from that really was that it was important to get good quality information to both the teacher and the student so that both could make decisions on teaching and learning quite quickly and, um, and move things forward. So we felt that technology had advantages here to um, help gather information quickly, process it and give it back to the people who need it. And also for mathematics in particular, technology is useful in removing the burden of computation that a lot of students fall under and to try and give them um, opportunities to use mathematics and technology in the way mathematicians would to try and explore and experiment. So uh, I'm sure you'll remember our project has two main parts. Well, one is looking at developing an audience response system and the other is looking at developing interactive tasks and resources for use inside and outside the classroom. Um, a main part of our project also is to evaluate these resources and that evaluation is going on at the moment and uh, we're making the resources available on our project website um, as we review them and make final versions. Just to let you, to remind you of the audience response system, this is our Uni Doodle app. Um, the idea is that students and lecturers have um, tablets or smartphones that they can use in the classroom. The students download a student version of the app and the lecturer has their lecturer version. The lecturer can send a question to the students in class and the students can draw a graph, do a calculation, draw a diagram, send it back straight away and the lecturer can get um, an idea of what the class is thinking. So here's an example. Um, the lecturer can display all the, the students' answers and or focus on one and kind of use that to spark the next discussion. Um, we have this available in um, iOS and Android at the moment and uh, it's working in quite a lot of places so we start trialing we started trialing last year in Maynooth in the first semester. Then the second semester we used this in two modules with quite a lot of students in DCU and in a, another module in Maynooth. And at the moment it's been used um, in 20 classrooms, more than 20 classrooms all around the world. People in Australia are using it, South Africa, lots in Europe, the UK and um, in about eight or nine institutions in Ireland. Um, so our impact as well as the use of the UniDoodle app around the world, we've seen that uh, we wanted to see what the students thought about this. So we gave questionnaires to the students in these modules where it was being trialled, the ones last year. Um, we had focus group interviews with students and we also got lecturer feedback. Um, first of all, using the app, um, most of the students, the vast majority, felt that it was very usable. They didn't have any kind of technological problems. We also f found that we didn't have any problems in classrooms with kind of Wi-Fi or um, technological issues like that, uh, at least where we were working. And I know one of the questions last time was, what if people don't have a smartphone? Well, it turns out that I'm the only person in the world that doesn't have a smartphone. <laughs> so, um, but 98% of our students always have one with them at all times and uh, it's the most important thing to them often. Um, we asked them about formative assessment. Um, we asked these kind of, we didn't ask, we didn't use the words formative assessment, but we asked them things like, um, did they think it allowed them to get feedback and what did the feedback do for them? So lots of them felt 
they, they were liked to get the instant feedback. They found that the feedback <coughs> helped their understanding, helped them figure out where they were and also develop their own understanding. And also that it allowed, they realized that it allowed the lecturer to know where they were. Um, one thing, and I'm sure it's a problem with a lot of these things, that once the students get their phones out, then they may not be so interested in what you're talking about. They might be looking at Facebook or something like that. But I think that's something we just have to build into the classes ourselves. The lecturers have to deal with that. Um, the student focus group themes, I'm not going to um, say a lot about this. A lot of the issues um, were the students felt that it, it was good for engagement, that they realized that they were kind of paying more attention, they knew there was going to be a question, they were going to take part. Um, they liked getting the feedback um, and they liked the lecturer being able to see whether they had problems with something or not. The anonymity, there are no names when the, these things go up on the screen, nobody knows who said what. Um, they liked that because it took the fear out of being wrong and in mathematics that's actually a really big problem. But also, they like seeing that other people were wrong, and they weren't the only people that had a problem. And actually, I think that that's actually, we know from our own experience in our support centre, that's really important because everyone thinks, I'm the only one who doesn't know this. So if they see lots of people are having trouble and the lecturer spends time then working on that, it can really help. The other thing is they felt that it gave them a voice. It gave them a chance to say what they thought or what they um, um, thought, their understanding of a specific concept. The lecturer themes are very similar, um, engagement, feedback, um, anonymity, the lecturers were saying, because it's anonymous, if you asked a question in a class of 160 people, ask a mathematics question, there are very few people brave enough to put up their hand and, and give you an answer, but if you ask a question in this form, you get loads and loads of responses because people are more happy to, do, um, to give their response when it's not their name tagged onto it. The one thing the lecturer has said, and I think this is very important, that it's really crucial to use this properly to ask the right kinds of questions. So you can't just kind of randomly go in and ask a question. You want to figure out what's a good thing here, what do I really want to know, how can I use, you kind of have to know beforehand roughly what the output's going to be so that you're prepared to use it in a good way. So I think that kind of ties with the other part of our project, which is trying to design good questions and resources for use inside and outside the classroom. The other things we're doing, I've listed here, I won't go through all of them because I'm, I'm, my talk, I'm going to talk about some of them about the evaluation that we've been doing, but we've been de designing tasks, designing assessments um, and of different forms. Uh, one new thing since the last time we spoke is that we've um, in the task design part of the project, I've been working with some people in the US who are doing something similar. And they had a, a game that they had designed for their own students that was just a paper-based game. And we thought maybe it would be good to try and develop a, a smartphone app again for this game that students can use to develop their conceptual understanding of functions. So Christine has been, um, she has a prototype of this at the moment. Um, later, if you, if you have any questions. Um, the, Evaluation of these kind of resources. Uh, last time we spoke about using, we were reusing some Khan Academy materials and we were designing Moodle courses. The feedback we got from students was really useful in redesigning what we did with those. So we have been working on that. And some of the things we've done has been including the Numbus, um, using Numbus that the project from Cork has been using. We thought that some of the things they did would be useful for us. We, we've done some of that too. Um, we retrialed the Khan Academy <coughs> playlist, tying everything much more closely to the course and to the assessment in the course, and we had a much higher engagement from the students, and we saw significantly, statistically significantly um, higher marks uh, for the students who engaged with these materials um, than those who didn't, and um, these were all correlated positively with the um, scores they were getting. There final scores were correlated with the scores they got on the Khan Academy quizzes. Um, the other projects, the sc screencasts, so uh, you probably remember that the idea here is that students get quite a difficult problem to work on. Instead of giving their solution in paper form, they make a little screencast about it so they can explain it to their peers and the lecturer and that's what's assessed. 
and um, we had the students in a computing and games <laughs> development course doing this in Dundalk and um, the students did a really good job and we asked them what they thought of this whole project and they felt that making the little screencast was something that forced them to think deeper about their own solution and to have to explain. It's like the old thing that if you want to know something, teach it. I think that this was something that they were finding out that having to explain it to somebody else made them understand or think about it in a different way. Um, and also they appreciated being given a voice that they could explain their own solution and it was kind of theirs, they were, had some buy-in. Um, this is being currently retrialed in Dundalk um, at the moment and we're going to have more data from that in the next few weeks. Um, the task-based interviews, we looked at the interactive tasks that we designed through GeoGebra and uh, we had intensive interviews with five students in DCU last summer. Uh, we've gathered a lot of data from that. We gathered the data from their screens so we know exactly where, what they were looking at, what they were clicking on and what they were doing. We have audio recordings and written data also. Um, we are still working on the analysis of that. It's actually a big job but the Im immediate things we can see is we can see, we gave students a pretest and then we let them work on similar topics on the, uh, using these tasks, uh, we did see progression. We saw some students having real aha moments where they kind of got something. N not all students, but some, uh, we did see some of this. And we definitely saw that being able to visualize, being able to have graphs and things moving and being able to allow, allow the students the opportunity to do all of this exploration themselves <coughs> seemed to help them. So in summary, the evaluation of these resources, we have seen um, the technology helps with things like immediacy, getting instant feedback, uh, definitely with engagement in class and outside, and it helps students in mathematics definitely to be able to use mathematical thinking skills like visualization and generalization. <coughs> um, we're still evaluating, we're still carrying out interviews and um, focus groups and we will continue to do that on, and analyze the, the results, but we have seen um, definite indications that conceptual understanding and people's disposition towards the subject can be influenced by these tasks and resources. So other forms of impact, we've been giving um, workshops and talks um, in Ireland, so these are some of the ones we've looked at, we've been at in the last few months, and abroad and over the summer there were quite a few presentations at international conferences in Europe. Um, we have had conference proceedings published and others are in preparation and we have submitted so far three journal articles. We are preparing others on the evaluations of all of our resources. Um, <clears throat> the other things we'd like to talk about are for sustainability. Um, well the UniDoodle app is available on the App Store and Google Play at the moment and we have seen it's actually being used uh, in a lot of places and there was a lot of interest when uh, we gave presentations at uh, these European conferences in the summer. There were a lot of people who came up afterwards and were interested and some of those have actually used the resources now and are trialing them for us. Um, we are also developing our website. It's really not developed yet but it's um, we're starting to put things up as we revise our resources we're putting up the final versions so we have some up there at the moment um, we're also um, in the process of developing kind of a lecturer's guide to developing and using these resources and those will be ready by the end of the project and we have one of the things we did at the very beginning was we surveyed both lecturers and students to ask them what do they already use and what would they like to see. So some of the things that they already use and some of the things that we've kind of checked and thought they're really nice things, we've links to those on our website as well. Um, the other thing I suppose is the UniDoodle app. Last time we were here you said, you know, maybe you should think about 
going commercial. So um, Christine and Seamus, who have been really responsible for developing this, they were um, applied for funds from Enterprise Ireland to carry out a feasibility study into commercialisation. They've got that money now and have employed um, a consultant who's going to look at what else is available, whether there is um, a chance for this to become a marketable op, you know, quant object or whatever. Um, and that report will be ready in the next few months. And at that point, we will apply for more funding from Enterprise Ireland or wherever to see if um, we can make this a commercial project. So that's all. I'd just like to say thank you to the forum for giving us the opportunity to, to do this work. And, um, and thank you to my team who have been amazing. Thank you.